Thanks for staying with us. Uh, right now, we're going to the press to see what the headlines are. And uh, we're going to be looking at four newspapers this morning. The Punch newspaper, uh, the Guardian newspaper, the Daily Trust newspaper, and also Nature News. So we'll just, we'll just reel out some of these um, uh, headlines here. EFCC donates five or 50 billion Naira crime proceeds to Nelfon. NNPCL disposes or postpones rather, Port Harcourt refinery kickoff uh, sixth time, 4.2 trillion Naira foreign MOU signed on the Tinubu, as according to a report. The, all these are on Punch newspaper, and it leads with federal government blocks 83 billion Naira protest funds arrest political collaborators. On the, on the Guardian, we have two years after states under-enroll under as 90% Nigerians still uh, pay out of pocket for the National Health Insurance Act. Uh, reps on braid or upbraid WAEG for failing to account for 5 billion uh, Naira calculators. Benway farmers panic over persisting drought. 16 die, 17 injured in Ibadan, multiple road crash. Uh, chairman affirms 26 embattled rivers lawmakers as APC members. OBJ, IBB absent as Buhari. Jonathan, ex leaders, pass vote of confidence in t on Tinubu. Uh, manufacturing FMCG firm. Post 25% YID losses as demand plummets. Customs Nigeria's food imports surge 95.28% uh, to 920.54 billion Naira in first quarter of 2024. Uh, we also have on the Daily Trust Nigeria wasting rice, yam, fish amid food crisis. That's according to a report. I don't know how that is. Local government polls opposition kicks as state electoral bodies impose new fees. 70% uh, windfall tax burdensome, ill-timed bank directors, NNPC FIRS, others frustrating National Assembly, Tinubu's government, that is according to Senate panel. All these are on daily trust. 28 killed in Oyo Ogun road crashes. Each uh, senator earns 1.063 million naira monthly, that's according to the RMAFC. Tinubu approves 300% uh, pay rise for judicial officers. Wait till 2027 if you're not satisfied with government. That's according to Council of States. And on the Nature News, we have federal government launches 10-year action plan on elephant poaching wildlife crimes. As is a green government pursuing robust climate change agenda. That's according to Governor Adeleke. Nigerians urge federal government to declare National Day for Tree Planting. That's on uh, Nature News polls. Kwara government bans unregistered waste pickers, launches anti-dumping tax force. Nigerian teenager wins Eco Hero Award for plastic waste upcycling and all that. We, are, we have more uh, headlines on Nature News, on Daily Trust, on The Guardian, on The Punch newspaper, more than I have even read. Okay, so we'll be joined, we're now going to... Uh, join our guest for this morning, who is uh, Mr. Tunde Kolawole, a legal, legal practitioner here in Lagos State, uh, to see how much of these headlines we can cover. Good morning, Mr. Kolawole. Well, uh, if it is true that uh, those who organized the last protest have uh, been receiving uh, funds from abroad, that would be against the laws of the land. It can also be against the ethics and philosophy for organizing a protest uh, anywhere in the world. You are expected to use your own internal resources to form whatever demonstration or protest that you want to carry out. And this is because protest has not supposed to be an instrument for undermining the authorities or the government. Is merely expected to wait the protesters to voice their discontent to allow the authorities to know that they are not happy with the policies and programs of the government. That is usually the philosophy of protest strikes and the agitations and the writing of petitions for government. But with that as it may, uh, what the government is saying. Honestly speaking, uh, it is difficult to believe. I am not saying there could be no funding 
uh, from outside. But I do remember when the protest against Dr. Gulo Doneta was organized, when um, uh, people protested against uh, the jacking up of uh, the pump prices of petroleum products, mm. we can all recollect that uh, certain persons to individuals in the society made funds available for printing of t-shirts, for supply of water, for supply of food, mm. for treating of people in the hospitals, and they also for printing of the uh, uh, cards and no manner of banner for the protest and whatever. Even lately, Chen Sani, the former senator from Kaduna State, as a as even Mr. President himself, that is actually what I meant to you know, and the fact they fund the protest and rallies and all that. You know. So it is nothing new as such and all that. But it's coming from the floor, and when you weigh it in, or when you also put that the background of the banner, the I mean the Russian flag that was said to have been uh, displayed in the northern part of the country when these protests were going on, then this issue becomes a very worrisome uh, development. But like I said, too, uh, some of the assertions of the government is difficult to believe because it would appear to me that uh, before the protest took off, we saw a lot of propaganda stuff coming from the government, coming from the state government, from the local government, from the federal government, to protest the protest. And ever since the protest took place, we've also been seeing a lot of propaganda stuff being dished out uh, to really kind of uh, undermine those who organize um, the protest and also to discredit uh, them. But uh, the government should realize that we are in an era of fact, fact checks. If the government is not saying the truth, if the truth this is merely a propaganda stuff, all these things can be verified through one fact check, uh, fact check a platform or the other. And if it turns out that um, the government is being economical with the truth. Then the government would have gone a long way to discredit itself and also to further create a kind of uh, trust deficit between the Nigerian people and the government in power. But we must remember all the people that have been fingered in this sponsorship thing are opponents, uh, people in the opposition party. Mm. And people that this government is not uh, too disposed to uh, as uh, politicians or as individuals. Uh, with due respect, uh, the former Kaduna State Governor, Mala Eruka, has been mentioned, and some other parties are not there. And we all do know that these are people who are not in the good standing of the present government. Of course, too, we have seen the raid on the MLC um, uh, Secretariat. Even though the idea of police has said it to the suspect that they have traced them uh, or trailed to that uh, spot. In the history of our country and when protests and strikes do happen, uh, such a thing is not uh, uh, too common. There could be some other subtle way of arresting whoever may be hiding or using the NLC secretariat or who has rented uh, an apartment in NLC secretariat to find members of interest. It is the government. So the bottom line is this. If it is true, it is a condemnable act. That is something we should not encourage. But if the government is merely using this as a propaganda to discredit those who organize this protest, this cause nobody needs to be sponsored to know that he is hungry. Nobody needs to be sponsored to know that he should protest and kick against the debilitating hunger that is hitting the Nigerian people. Uh, across the board, across the country, and all over the place and borders. I mean, Nigerian people, uh, people who have common sense, who will do anything, or who will do the right thing without being sponsored. And this country has had a long, a checkered history of protests, rallies, and petitions, and all that. Remember about riots? Remember, I mean, this is the formula of Ransom Putin. The protests and rallies he organized in Abel Kuta, which even led to the deployment of a sitting upper. And similar other protests that have taken place, remember the NSAF protest, 
remember the activities of Oshio Omale, the senator now, when he was the president of the NLC. So let's keep our fingers crossed as the situation unfolds. Uh, let's keep our fingers crossed. Okay, well, I was just uh, impressed uh, how swiftly they could find out these people who were um, financing the, the protest and got some people arrested. We've always had uh, this, uh, or, or heard rather, the information that um, they have a list of people who are sponsoring bandits and that they will make it available to the public soon. We've not seen <laughs> any arrest uh, for these people who have been sponsoring uh, bandits in the north. And now they yeah. have a list of people sponsoring protests and they have made arrests. Uh, maybe yeah. our, our intelligence uh, agencies have, are, are improving. So one day we'll find them arresting people who are also sponsoring banditry in the north uh, or uh, uh, terrorism in the north. Because they have always told us that there is this list of people who are sponsoring. But we've never heard any name and we've never seen any arrest being made. But for the protests, they have arrested people. So we thank God they are improving now. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay, so... I agree with you. Yeah. Now, the TUC backs 5 million naira monthly pay for judges, a little bit above 5 million anyway. 300% uh, increase in the salaries of judicial workers is what is reigning right now. And I'd like you, you are a legal practitioner yourself. Apart from the fact that we welcome this development, uh, do you think it will make a significant impact in the judicial system? I mean, I mean making it more transparent, make it it have more integrity, making it uh, more trustworthy uh, than it is right now by just raising the, um, the salaries of judicial workers by 300%. There is uh, no doubt that uh, the judiciary serves uh, judges and what have you are badly paid in this country. And if people are in so sensitive positions and all that, and you don't want them to be susceptible to temptation and what have you. What you ought to do is to make sure as much as possible that they are comfortable, that their take home can take them home. But in the history of this country, the politicians have only concentrated the welfare packages on themselves, the deputy arm of government, the legislation. Too many times and all the time, the judiciary have only have to go cap in hand to beg the deputy arm of government for its means of sustenance. And I think it is deliberate. The deputy arm of government and then the judiciary, I mean, and then the legislator, do not want a strong judiciary that can challenge them, get them to account, and make sure that things are properly uh, 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 done. You will recollect that uh, in the return of this democracy, what are they? There are many scientists and we speaking judges, especially an honorable justice, uh, honorable way, an honorable justice from Mosquito, wrote a pamphlet, wrote a petition as regards the deplorable conditions in which judges in Mosquito were living at a period in time under a certain governor. And that is not peculiar to Mosquito alone. I have had calls to do cases outside Lagos. And when I enter some of the courtrooms outside Lagos, I wish for the judges and then the registrar and other auxiliary staffers who use those facilities. The condition is, uh, is, uh, is terrible. And uh, I must also say, there are a lot of men of integrity uh, in the justice system, especially among the judges. A lot of people of integrity and war affairs. In fact, it is difficult to rise to that level if you don't have integrity, if you are corrupt. Some of the but Mr. Mr. Kolawole, Mr. Kolawole, yes, just please. just a moment, yes, um, uh, because yes. uh, we're running out of time and we should be as fast as possible all when right, we are right, uh, doing this. Right. But uh, the question is. Um, uh, when these salaries are increased like this and there's no correspondent yeah. um, um, infrastructure development, manpower development and all that, do you think it's yeah. going to have any impact? That's my question. Because the people are talking about the fact that we need more courthouses, we more, need more judges. Exactly. But now these judges who have all this work 
on their table are, are given a bigger salary, but they will still have to do this work. Maybe per day, a judge is ha exactly. having to look at 20 cases to 30 cases on one particular day, and it's too much. So do you think it's going to have any very significant impact on the dispensation of justice? That's what I'm asking, as swiftly as possible. Well, uh, with regard to the welfare of the individual judges and their families, it may have, but as uh, you have rightly said, the consequences or the impact or the people is going to bring on their jobs might be minimal, in the sense that if the other facilities are not there, and you merely throw money at the judges and war at you, uh, it may not solve the problem. It may just alleviate or address about 5 or 10 percent of the problem, even the remaining 90 percent unattended to. We have seen that in some states of the federation, in which salaries of judges have been increased, and then accommodation and beautiful cars provided for them. But the city division of justice has not improved uh, significantly. It hasn't improved. Mm. Okay, let's move to Daily Trust newspaper. Um, on Daily Trust newspaper, um, we have been told that each senator earns uh, 1.063 million naira monthly. That's according to the Revenue Mobilization and Fiscal Commission. Uh, as against mm -hmm. what um, the senator said, a senator came out to say it is 600,000 the end, not even 900,000. Now the uh, body that is responsible for doing that or giving them their salaries is telling us that they earn above a million naira per month. So, <laughs> what is your take? Well, the authority as regards the earning of the living in the National Assembly in line with the, the Revenue Mobilization Commission and not the rolling line the amount of the senators themselves and what have you. I'm not too really sure that the Revenue Mobilization Commission will come out and start making this kind of claims without uh, having his data uh, at his uh, disposal. I would want to go with the Revenue Mobilization uh, uh, Commission and uh, what have you. Uh, well, even when you look at the inflationary trend in the country today and all that, you find out that even this money we say the senators are earning uh, isn't uh, anything again to write home about. Maybe after 10 years ago, Maybe about five years ago, it may have many, but it no longer has many. But when you also compare that salary with what the average Nigerian worker earns, you won't agree that it is a jumbo so it's a windfall uh, payment. Why don't the National Assembly people also uh, uh, think out the idea of uh, kind of uh, going to the civil salary for top and then? Uh, Promulgating a lot that will also make them earn the minimum wage that the average Nigerian worker is earning, uh, so that they will see and know that the issues are painting the Nigerian people. It is still big money when you look at it vis a vis the average salary of the average Nigerian worker, whether in the private sector or in the judiciary or in the civil side. So there is something that doesn't uh, uh, tally with regards to this um, claim. Some of us have been advocating that what we should pay these people it should be civil salary, I mean, the civil servant uh, salary. And sometimes uh, sitting allowances and uh, transportation allowances, uh, when they do make uh, some of those things that are very poor or that may not be able to show that the responsibility of putting uh, the members of the Houses of Assembly on a monthly salary uh, structure. We have to do a lot just to be the earnings of the National Assembly. It should be in tandem with the reality of the Nigerian situation. Okay. Okay, now um, let's take another, another um, headline. Wait till 2027 if you're not satisfied with government. That's the Council of State. Remember, the president held a meeting, yeah. the Council of State, and all, um, almost all the past leaders were there, except uh, IBB and OBJ. They're the ones that were conspicuously absent from that meeting. And 
there were governors there, there were speaker and uh, senate president, past and present, and then they passed a vote of confidence on the president, uh, Tinubu administration, and asked the people to wait till 2027 if they want to make a change. I don't know if they see things that we are not seeing, but this is the reality on ground now. All past leaders and the present ones have said that this government is doing well. Well, uh, if you look at the composition of the Council of State, the governors, former military head of state, retired uh, presidents and what have you, you will agree with me that um, they are in a way politicians uh, and part and parcel of uh, all governments or any government uh, in power and the uh, world are doing. And then given the position in which they are, they will want to be mindful of whatever they say and what they put out in there so as not to rupture the system, so as not to create a problem for the sitting uh, government. That is why sometimes um, all bodies like this we want to be said to be giving up to the people and encouraging the government in power to also do more for the citizens. But with that as it may, I want to say that if try to put on this posture in the public, I hope they have also have the, have the courage, like say with any heart, to tell Mr. President the bitter truth of the apostasies in the country. Inflation is, uh, has become uh, uh, something else. There is a food insecurity in the land. Security and safety of people and even domestic animals are no longer guaranteed. On a daily basis, people are running outside the country. And just yesterday or there about, a friend posted something to my world of account of what happened to a journalist at the public hospital in Abuja. He went in there for surgery, I think prostate cancer surgery or what have you. And in the process of when he went for the first surgery, the doctor who carry out the surgery and all that. Ruptured his bladder and he had to be taken to the surgery six times. And after the six times, they still could not fix um, the challenges. He had to be flown to Egypt by his friend for correction surgery. And when he got to Egypt and all that, he said the Egyptian official showed him so many cases of Nigerians whose uh, medical um, treatment has been badly managed in the Nigerian hospitals and which have had to be flown to Egypt for correction. And you ask us, why is this happening? The same doctors will go abroad and do wonders. But in India, they perform too badly. My guess is that the treatment are not there. That most of our cities today are merely consulting clinics that is unable to handle any serious case as they used to do in the past. Okay. So if the Council of State are not letting Mr. President know about this, about some of these fundamental issues and all that, then they are merely deceiving him and then postponing the evil day and complicating matters for Mr. President. Mm. What I would say, like say we can have had. Some of them would have had the courage, because looking at the people who posed for this picture, I could see a lot of them are men of courage, uh, people who have, who have integrity, mm. people who, be, who, who will not be economic with the truth when they are speaking with the president. So, uh, let's uh, take what has been put in, out in there okay. in, front, in front of uh, the daily trust as a diplomacy, a diplomatic language just to give hope to the Nigerian people. All right. Um, I'm very sure they told him to his face uh, what he needs to do, how he needs to sit up, what the people are facing. Uh, exactly. Like you said, those people exactly. are not people who will fear mm. him. Uh, but they can't come exactly. and tell us that we told him oh, that Nigerians are suffering oh, and all that. So uh, it's, 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 it's safe. Uh, let's hope that uh, the president does the needful and the people see that he has the interest of the people at heart. Um, thank you, Mr. Thank you. Kolawoli, for uh, your time this morning. It's always a pleasure having you on the show. Thanks for having me. Okay. You have a lovely day. You too. And a great week ahead of you. You too. And uh, my, extend my paternal greeting to our police mm. in the back room, in the studios. All right. They will, they will hear. Thank you.
We've been talking with Mr. Tunde Kolawole, a legal practitioner here in Lagos, and we were looking at some of the headlines um, that made it to uh, the front pages of our national dailies. We couldn't cover all, but uh, we hope that uh, you will grab a newspaper for yourself and see what is happening around Nigeria. We'll take a short break now. When we return, we'll be joined by our first guest uh, that will be talking uh, to us on uh, the approval of... Um, the policy to retain medical experts within Nigeria. Stay with us. <laughs> 